Hello and welcome back to the County Caledonians in Imperator Rome. So, we are currently controlling this land up here. We've expanded into some new territory and I've found some stuff I was looking for in the last episode. So, last episode I was saying there were problems if you had one of the commanders in charge of your army who wasn't very loyal to you. And I found out two places where you can find this information. One, beyond to the commander himself, you can see loyalty. It basically tells you what exactly like how loyal they are to you and how they're going to stay loyal to you in the future. So this guy right now, he's fairly loyal to us because he's um, got 66 out of 100. He's a clan chief, so it's got a little bit from that. He's, uh, his family is married to my family, so he gets a little bit of a bonus from that. But it is going down over time. Now, why is it actually the maximum is 80? I can actually say it right there, right underneath. The Caledonian loyalty maximum of 80 due to the fact that we are a tribe and we have insular clans. So actually that's really quite high for us but it's going down because of loyal cohorts and i believe that is because of how much power he has in relation to us and everyone else that in that we have under our control so if we have a look at her her loyal cohorts number is less because she has less troops um, but it's her loyalty is still going down because she's not married into our family and what's lapsed i'm not entirely sure what lapsed is but you know it's going down as well. So we need to just basically make sure that these two are fairly happy with us. And we could do that in many ways. We could exalt them, which would increase their loyalty. But also, I think that um, decreases the loyalty of our other clan chief. We could bribe them. We could try and just be friends with them. All sorts of different things we could do. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Because, well, I think it's time to declare a war. Now, is this another... Um, so th this is just free land. So what free land is, basically if it's not uh, controlled by uh, a nation, is like this bit of land here, you can colonize it. But to colonize it, you need to have um, 10 pops. So if we, ha oh, 10 pops surrounding, but apparently two cities sharing a sea zone count as adjacent for the purposes of colonization. Um, oh, okay, I think it's just say, I think that's saying that if you have one that's, he like say we had um, this one, it would still count because there's a sea tile in the way. Okay, that's not, that's not going to be a problem right now. But basically, we need to increase population if we want to colonize that land. Is there a way of just increasing population? So if we went in here... Uh, no, we could move population around. I believe you can go here and you can say, actually, you should be over there with civic power. But that's not actually make our population go up. I think you just have to wait for population growth, which is one of these, which I can't quite remember right now. Uh, but yes, we'll just have to wait for population growth to happen. Just naturally over time. I, I think. Anyway. Uh, even if that's not the case. I don't care right now. Because we're going to declare another war. We're immediately going to do it. Now right now. We don't actually have a reason to. We, we have no claim on their land. So we would have to do a no CB war. Uh, which is a little bit. Well I suppose we could do show superiority. So that means. But that's still a no CB war. Okay. That's fine. Oh, they actually have allies. Oh, right. And their allies are my allies. And my allies wouldn't come in. Oh, so maybe I don't want to do this one. Maybe I want to hold off a second. Here. Just ch chill out. Yeah, let's just chill out. Get some points. Accept what we got. Maybe try and expand our army slightly so that our, um, our remaining clan people aren't so annoyed. But also, what's interesting is, even if we expand our army, it's going to be an issue. Because we have a general... Who, although his loyalty is quite high to us right now, that's going to start ticking down. Uh, actually, this one's currently ticking up, but that might start ticking down. And then if we make him too strong, it's going to tick down faster. So we need to basically balance that sort of thing. Uh, let's let's just get another army of the same type that we got last time. I'm also going to split up our army slightly. So uh, I'm going to leave one army there. I'm going to move another army up there. Actually, this might be a good time to use automation. Yeah, I'm just going to... Um, Put them all in the same province again. I'm just going to automate them. I'm going to say, all of you, your job is to, um, I don't know, fight rebels. That's your job. We'll see what they do. I'm not entirely sure they're going to do anything, but that's fine. Uh, we're then going to get a couple of archers. They do cost a little bit. Um, we still have a little bit left, though. How much does our army cost overall? If we go to economy here, we can have a look here. So can we see how much each individual troop costs us over time? So if I went in here, actually, is the way of seeing, like, this troop costs us this much money. No. Okay. Maybe they don't cost us any. Well, it does seem to suggest they do. 
Uh, first warband costs us one gold. Okay, so we could effectively have the same sized army and be fine. Uh, I might just grab a few extra and add it onto the first warband then. Uh, that's fine. So we're just going to add an extra archer up here. And then like an extra skirmisher over here. I'm not sure what the proper composition should be, but we'll go with that for just now and see how it goes. Right, let's just unpause and let things uh, roll out. Okay. So it looks like they're not going anywhere, these armies. Um, okay. Well, if they're not going anywhere, what if I just say um, act independently? Do whatever you'd like, right? So they're now all set to do whatever they'd like. This going to sit there? That's fine. I guess if they take attrition, they might move. That's kind of what I'm hoping for here. We'll see. Uh, actually, these two armies are going to head down. Uh, they're, they're first of all, going to head over there and merge up. And then they're going to head further down. Lack of a commander. Yeah, well, that's okay. We know there's a lack of a la commander. Well, this guy's considering not being our ally. Why does he not want to be our ally anymore? Um, does he not like us? How do... Okay, let's go back to that one. Um, how do I see his opinion of us? Uh, I do not know. I oh, there we go. He actually quite likes us. Oh, maybe it's because someone else is about to attack us, potentially. And he's considering joining them. I don't know if that's the, the case. I could send him a gift. We could have 25 opinion. We actually have a lot of money spare, so I might just send him a gift. Just keep him on the happy side. Uh, and see how it goes. That's okay. Yeah. So he likes us a little bit better now, and he's not considering leaving our alliance. Because he's quite an important ally right now. He's a very, very strong force nearby. We can also build in, our, in some of these provinces. So if we go to our capital here, we could start getting marketplaces. Which, uh, what do they give us? Local taxes, or we can get local manpower, fort level, population growth. Actually, I do want population growth. So maybe I'll just buy a granary. We have enough money. Let's buy a granary. Let's see how that goes. Right. Um... Okay. Uh, Ruridron Akron Prospers. The chiefs of Adrur Ad Ruridron Akron have sent an envoy proclaiming that harvest, trade, and taxation have all produced a huge surplus this year. In a splendid show of national spirit, they have decided to offer the additional income to the state. Perhaps we could let them spend the money for their own uses, however. So we can either take 20 gold or we get two tribesmen. Ooh. I quite like the idea of getting two tribesmen. Okay, so where's that? That's in this one up here. So now we have four tribesmen in that province. In that city. Oh, okay. Interesting. I do want to get up to ten so we can start merging our land together. Um, but yeah, that, that seemed very good. That's, that seems a lot more worth than that amount of money. But maybe that changes as the game goes on. Actually, this one has seven in it. Oh, not seven. Yeah, that one does have seven in it. Maybe we wanted to build a granary here and try and get a few more in there. We also have a trade route going here, apparently. Uh, we're importing furs. Okay, and then our capital, what are we importing? Furs. Wait, is that the same? Oh, is this all start part of the same province? Is that where I'm falling apart here? Ah, yes, that's all part of the same province. So, yes, it has the same trade routes and all the same kind of stuff in there. I understand, right. So, we basically don't need to worry about it. And the capital province is always loyal. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, and currently, uh, we have a, a policy which has mean that um, everything in here, we're trying to get money. Okay. Acquisition of wealth. So I could apparently switch this, and that would get us local unrest in all of our provinces, but it would give us different kind of stuff. Like, we could try and convert people to our faith, our culture. Okay, get a lot more tax. But, that, but this one wouldn't actually lose us unrest. Oh no, that would give us two unrest. Okay, so that's just for choosing what type of thing we want here. Could try and get more local import routes if we wanted to go that way. Hmm. Potentially. Is there any pun uh, penalty to changing my trade route? Yes, it would cost me uh, 25 civic power. That's the penalty. Anyway, uh, we'll switch back to the political map mode and just let things roll on a little bit. Uh, so now I've got these armies together. I'm going to bring them down and merge them up with the other army that we had down here. Uh, actually, are these already... These cannot be merged. Oh, because they're currently moving. I never actually merged them. Yeah, just stop in, stop in Caledonia here for a second. Right. Merge. Then I'm going to bring them over here. And, we'll mer and then we'll merge them up with the other army that we already have over here. Making our army quite large. Well, not really that large, but... Oh, and you see they're already moving away. That's what I was after. 
So if we um, deselect that one and that one, we can now merge these two. And this guy now has um, a larger army with him. And now, thanks to our automation, they've realized, oh, I'm taking attrition, I'm going to move away. Isn't that nice? We didn't have to do anything. Also, I want to see what the effects of our aggressive expansion were. So if we just pick a nearby neighbor, it might be a little bit after it's fallen off anyway, but they don't seem to care about our aggressive expansion. So the land we took must not have been that expansive. I guess we did have a claim and it is already within a province we held. So it's not like we went right out there on a limb to do that. Anyway, so if we wanted to attack this person now, I just want to see what the options are. We still wouldn't have that many for it. Okay, interesting. So there's a little bit more peace for us right now. That score. Oh, okay. Don't need to worry about that one then. A religious proceeding. A struggle between the religious uh, echelons of our society um, and the peasants has recently come to light, as the populace at large feel like the religious ceremonies are inaccessible and distant. On the other hand, our high priest and her attendants demand the distance needed to do their jobs properly, and the argument the peasants have, uh, and the argument the peasants have no right to the inner workings of our religious ceremonies. Okay. Oh, I think that should be an argue. Anyway, that's fine. So we can lose stability if we leave the priests alone. It gives us more omen power, 15% more. So that's not really an awful lot. Um, and then omen duration goes longer. Oh, so how long do omens last? Oh, we can see it's still going. And that'll last for another year. So it's a couple of years at very least. Okay, that's fine. But then the high priests would be loyal. Um... Is she the high priest right now? Yeah, right. So she is. She, she's the high priest. And I guess we'd see that if we go to our government. And then go to high priest. Yeah, we see her there. That's fine. Uh, so that's one option. But we also get a lot of national unrest. Here we could say religious proceeding through the city will appease both sides. So we gain religious power and gain loyalty. That seems like the best option so far. Or we can gain a stability. Which is quite nice. Lower our national unrest, but we get less omen power and less omen duration. I assume omen power actually might be how good the omen is for you. Well, given that we don't need omens right now, I mean, it will lower her loyalty for me right now, but our max loyalty is only 80, so she's already pretty close to max. Yeah, I'm going to get a stability. That's going to increase our tax a little bit. It's going to increase our research points, uh, ruler popularity gain, and loyalty of subject states. Yeah, that seems good. I'm going to do that. If I choose that one, our realm is more stable. So yeah, it's giving us an extra 5% on national tax. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll take it. Seems alright. Um, oh, I see. They've all moved to a different province. I guess because that one has... Um, I guess they've tried to stay together. But that one must have more supply limit. Oh, well, that's good. Is there anyone else we can attack? If Is there an... Like, uh, I'm looking for... It's like, nah, okay, it doesn't show us possible targets on that map mode. I just thought I'd have a look and see if that's uh, something we can do. Okay, so if I choose, say, this nation down here, do we have a reason to declare war? No. But the enemies have allies. Okay. And down here, same thing? No, actually, the enemies don't have allies. They have a truce, so they won't join war. We could probably get, um, we could probably attack through there if we got uh, military access through them. Hmm. That could be fine. Um, yeah, it might be worth trying a war that's much further away. Now, I'm assuming that attacking over there is going to be a huge problem. Although it does seem to have a dotted line. So I'm assuming that means that we can go across. But I'm not sure what the negatives are going to be for that. Uh, they would give me military access if I asked. Let's take the military access. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, okay. That's fine. They're going to say yes to that. And then I'd like to move down here. How many relations can we have as a nation? Uh, I haven't really thought about that. Um, we have... We have two. It doesn't seem to say how many we can have as a max, but I assume that's something related to the size of our tribe, maybe? Or something like that? Um, hmm. I'm not entirely sure where we find that out. But right now, two seems to be fine. There's no problems with two. Okay. We have a lot of military power. Is there anything we can do with that military tip power right now? Um, ah, no, we need 800 to get a new tradition for our military. Okay, and these give us basically very large bonuses. So, yeah, we want to go and have a look at that. That's fine. So, we'll just move our entire army down here. Um, I should turn off their objectives. Yeah. 
So now they're all they're all uh, player controlled. I think they might be player controlled anyway because I'd given them a place to go, but we'll see. Um, okay, we're still researching, but we don't have great efficiency at it. That's fine. Um, oh, what's this one? We're the obs uh, the obsessive. So. And uh, we've begun devoting every waking hour to our work. While this is admirable, it might be, be beginning to affect her in ways we cannot begin to understand. So we become obsessive. What does that do? So if I go on to us here, obsessive gives us zeal. Okay, so we get even more. Wait, so that, that increases our zeal there. So actually, that doesn't increase the number of points we get per month because it's half rounded down. Okay. But uh, if we're a ruler, it will also, because we're not a governor, it will lower our national citizen output. Hmm. Okay. What are the other ones we have? So we have aggressive, which gives us camel discipline. Ooh. Unlike cavalry discipline, neither of which we can use. We have this one, which increases the number of max friends we could have. So that's if we go, say, we went onto a ruler here and we're like, hey, I want to be friends with you. You know. And see how that goes. Um, I think that'll just make them like us more for the duration of that ruler, I assume. Um, okay. So we can have more friends. So if we wanted to be more diplomatic, we could be more diplomatic. Uh, we got commerce income goes up and prominence. I think prominence is something, if we have a look here, it says jobs and titles bring uh, prominent characters are likely to get married and have children, represents the fame of their family. Oh, okay. And then trusting. Monthly tyranny goes down and max rivals goes down. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, we can get a new advent invention. What are we going to get? Um, hmm. Diplomatic reputation means people are more likely to agree to our diplomatic action. So potentially we could do better. We could get like a um, more people involved in our war there. Potentially. Omen power. Not so interested. Mor morale recovery. Again, not that interested. Technology spread. Not that interested. Fabricate claims. Seems like it could be useful over a very long time. Uh, what we got here? National... Um, Commerce income potentially could be useful again. Um, I'm gonna go for the claim cost down. And my logic here is we can potentially get a good claim very, very soon. Let's just take it. Let's just take claim cost down. Yeah. Sometimes the only excuse we need is that we are the only ones who can truly offer security. Well, that's one way to put it. Oh, tribal chief. There we go. We got that. Fantastic. So we're heading down here. That's all okay. Right. Still a bad research points, but I'm not going to be overly worried about it. Okay. Go so ahead further down here. And this would be into a new province for us if we wanted to attack down here. It would split up our realm quite badly, but I could, I could um, be okay with that. We are taking attrition here, though. Um, hmm. Is there anything I can do to try and... Get, mm, I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do to make people not want to be their ally here. Um, I could send an insult and try and get them to attack us. I'm not going to think that's going to work. Um, if I did declare war, we could actually call in one of our... Oh, wait, they've lost allies. Or not all of their allies are joining in this war anymore. Oh, okay. So uh, Damnonia would join in. Uh, they would get Parisia here. So if we have a look at them, they have 11 troops. They have 7. Um, our ally here has 9. Okay, and we have 13, right? 16. Yeah, ours are just um, still reinforcing. So we could definitely attack in here. I'm kind of up for that war, actually, instead. Let's declare it. I know that we are just about to have enough oratory power to fabricate a claim. How much are we getting per month? We're getting three per month, so that would mean we'd have to wait four months. I think we can wait four months. Can I split these off slightly? Yeah, so if I stop, like, one there. And stop one there. That, that should mean that we split up and stop taking attrition while I do this. A feud. Two of our tribesmen have come forward today to ask for help settling ownership over a gold statue they found. Gwendolyn Aka believes it belongs to her as she was the one to find it, whereas... Indu Indutio Marius Morganus says that it belongs to him as it was discovered on his land. Okay. So then say it's belonged to one, it belongs to the other, which will ra basically raise and lose loyalty. Okay. 
and then they get gold. It belongs to Caledonia, means that they both dislike it. We gain tyranny. Okay, but our tyranny does go down uh, a bit. And actually, does our tyranny not go down because of us as well? Oh, I missed a bit as well. We'll get back to that. Our tyranny does go down because, because of us. Okay, because of our chief. So that could be an okay option if we want some more money. Or belongs to the gods gets us religious power. Uh, I'm going to take the gold. And then I'm going to pause it really quickly. Because I realized I missed something very important. Now, if we go and have a look into our nation here. Uh, it's in this bit, right? Uh, it's not in there. Government. It's, it's government. It's Ah, it's in there, right. So if we go to nation overview, we actually, I never set some ideas. And these are very important because if we set ideas that are equal to one oratory idea, one military idea, we get extra points per month. Seems like that could be quite useful, right? Given that we're basically waiting on points. So, a military idea. Oh, wow, these are amazing. I definitely should have had these. So I'm going to go for morale of armies for a military idea. So we just get 10% morale of armies, which seems good. And then oratory ideas. Um, we can get general and admiral loyalty per month, which sounds quite useful. And we're not really improving opinion. We're not do really doing corruption. I'm just going to take that one. And then that gives us an extra point per month. Which seems like something we probably should have been doing a lot earlier. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. Uh, I Wait, did that cost me oratory power to set my ideas? I think that might have set me or cost oratory power to set the ideas. All uh, right, well, you know, no CB wars, they're all the fashion, and all of my, both my allies are gonna- Oh, wait, they have a truce, so they can't join offensive wars? Hmm, all right. Anyway, one of my allies is willing to join the war, so let's go with it. Yes, we're gonna take the minus two stability. What's this one? We can call our allies into the war. Oh, it said that we couldn't call them into our war. Uh, wait, but now we can call them to arms? Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, you know, it said, you can't do this. And then it said, you can do this. So, that's fine. We'll merge up down here. As our full army together. Uh, and we'll just move forward. Uh, we are going to attack in. There's an imminent battle where we have more men. Yep. Oh, they ran away. Uh, is this a fort we're sieging? It is. So it's going to take a long time to siege, but it could be worthwhile. I don't think we can move past forts. I think it works similarly to um, EU4 like that, but I could be wrong. Seems to be sieging very quickly, though. That's okay. We have a lot of allies nearby, so there's no real issues. Oh, there's also there's the mercenary company we saw earlier that weren't on anybody's side, but still happened to be here. Kind of worryingly. Oh, we want. Wow, that was really quick taking that fort. I guess maybe the fort up here was a higher level. I do definitely want to go chase after their armies here. Yeah, we don't want them marching to our capital or anything like that, which is what they're doing. Yeah, so we're going to go follow after them. See what we can do. Uh, okay. Oh. Yes, I, I really needed to know about that, to be honest. It's very important to my current uh, situation. That something happened over there. Arbitrary demand. So this is the same one that we had before. Our arbitrator is demanding some money for some civic power. Yeah, seems fine. I have no issue with money for civic power. We're attacking in here. We have 10,000 versus their 3,000. Very, very easy battle for us. Now we're going to get the ones who have run off to our capital. What's happened there? Did they become independent? Ah, it's a revolt. Okay, I see. That's unfortunate. But that's fine. We will head up this way. And chase after this army. Hopefully we can get there before it gets our capital. We are. Building a uh, budding friendship. Uh, so. Us and Brit Venda Morgana spent last several weeks. So who is she? She's the apothecary and a friend of the general. Okay. Uh, deep in debate and a number of issues that they share strong feelings on. And a recent open discussion in the clan council. Um, Brit event uh, challenged uh, us directly, expecting the recent camaraderie to hold some sway. So I can say we can become friends or matters of principle should come first. Don't want to be friends with her? I mean, sure. I'm not entirely sure what problems being, have, like, you know, having a friend... You know, causes. Oh, apparently we can have six friends. We can have a lot of friends. 
Uh, I guess that just means that they will like us. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure what it does. Maybe it means they'll be loyal to us if they're friends. Where are you going? Where are you going? I definitely see... Oh, you're just walking at me. Okay, that's fine. Well, I walked at them. Right. So, we have beaten them up. Uh, we lost 264 troops. Uh, they, they lost 1,000. Where are they retreating off to? They're retreating up there. Okay. We'll definitely follow them. Our allies seem to have the rest of that covered. What's this one? We're at war. Yeah, we have starving populations. Oh, uh, that's where they were being sieged. And we can call an omen in. No, I'm going to go for population growth instead. I don't think we need the war bonus. I think we need the population growth bonus. Okay. Let's head up this way. So we caught their army. Uh, and we killed all of them. It seems like Shattered Retreat doesn't work uh, like EU4 and CK2. It seems like Shattered Retreat is kind of a... Um, it's more of an immediate thing. It's, uh, you can go to the next province and just chase them. Kind of in the same ways you could do in old uh, CK2, where you could just chase troops endlessly. Yeah. Okay. So we've sieged everything, haven't we? Uh, it looks like we've sieged everything. So why do we only have 50% war score? Does that mean our allies have war score? Oh, because we don't have that land down there. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so we'd need to get their land as well. How much do we need to just take all of that? So if I sue for peace, um, if I want them to give me that province and that province, that gives me four aggressive expansion, which is minus 10%. They would say no, because that's 77 war scores worth. Okay. If I asked for that land, they would say no. If I asked for that land, they would say yes. Okay. If I asked for them to become my subject, they would say yes. Okay. Um, so, we protect them if they're attacked. They're limited by... Oh, no, they would become Damnonias. Oh, wait, these are going to Damnonia, not to me. Oh. Okay, so we wouldn't get these. Oh, because we don't hold the capital ourselves. Well, that's awful. Can can I get them to transfer me the capital? How do I do that? I guess you can. Okay, so that's why you don't want to call your allies into things, I guess. Oh, wait, no, I can... Tr wait, is this one that I sieged or one that they sieged? Are these are the ones that I sieged. So this one, I cannot transfer. And they're not going to transfer. From one clan to another. One of our clan chiefs has suggested moving some of the people of our clan to her own rule instead. Not only would they be under a new ruler that would be more loyal to us, but she has promised to try and unify the people under her rule as well. Ari Ario Vitus Zenatus, on the other hand, has made no such promises, but, uh, but simply moving his people out of his clan's land would be seen as a disloyal move to his clans and those under her rule. So, we... Uh, we can either gain centralization or lose centralization. So I choose this one. Uh, this guy would get loyalty. Okay. So he would end up at 34 loyalty. Uh, sorry, 54 loyalty. And she would end up at 36 loyalty. And then... Uh, sh wait. This isn't her. This is some Oh no, that is her. Okay. Uh, and then she would lose prominence. Unless people would... Yeah, okay. That's fine. Uh, otherwise, we can lose money and civic power. We would gain loyalty and prominence with her. So, 51 and... Um, okay, and he'd get to full prominence. And he would lose 5 loyalty and lose 10 prominence. So, he'd be at 39. I think it's better to say not to do it and get the loyalty with him, right? I think so. Although, I don't know what centralization gives us, but... I'm going to choose that one. So, we now have a disloyal character here. Is there anything we can do here? We could try and make friends with her. Definitely could try that. Um, let's try and make friends with her. Did, was that successful or do we need to wait? We're already befriending her. I see. And we can also select a new invention here. Uh, new invention is going to be... Um, I don't know. Diplomatic reputation maybe? Yeah. 
Let's try and make people like us more. So I can't march down here and take this land, can I? No. We are actually losing war score thanks to these guys. I could go down there and try and fight them, though. We could try that. Okay. Wild beasts from the far corners of the earth make for eye-catching and exotic gifts. Various merchants throughout the region offer a wide range of creatures, both for the arena and private owners, from uh, Scythian colts to Nubian leopards. The question is, which impressive beast to send? Ah, so this is us trying to get opinion with her. So I can say a tiger will win her over. So it's basically how much money we want to send. Alright, and that makes progress towards it. Uh, I'm going to send a crocodile from the Nile. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So is there any way of asking here, can I have your land that you've sieged? No. Okay. But we could head south and see what we could do there. We could go and fight in there and see. Hmm. I'm going to head south. I want to win the war. Yeah. Yeah. Making an impression. Our position offers many ways to publicly flatter uh, Morgana. Okay, so this is making her like us again. Careful praise of her deeds in the halls of government among the notaries of our country will be sure to find a way back to her ears. Alternatively, a lavish sacrifice in her honor can hardly go ignored. And then again, a few can spur the gift of a public statue in their honor. I don't want to lose any power. Let's not go crazy. Yeah. I don't need her to like us that much. The benefits of power. Uh, she's the target of brazenly outspoken critic who's been provoking her ire for some time. It seems that Loudmouth is protected by political opponents of Kunolava and believes her, himself to be untouchable. This could be an excellent imp uh, opportunity to impress her. So I can spend money, get some tyranny, and then... Yeah, I'm going to spend money and get some tyranny. Our tyranny does affect loyalty slightly, but, you know, it's fine. I'm not overly worried about it. I want to go and get that capital down there. That's, that's my goal. We were spurned by her. This is incredibly vexy. <laughs> vexing. Yes. Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah, I just want to head straight to their capital and take it. Who are we at war with? The Caledonian... Oh, we're at War of the Revolt. It makes sense to be at War of the Revolt, to be fair. Right. Oh, wait, no. Is that the Revolt of... No, no. Okay, that does make sense. Still makes sense. That's fine. What's that? Disloyal characters. Yes. That's fine. I know they're disloyal. Oh, but now they're automated. I see their armies are doing whatever they want to do because they're disloyal. Hmm. Don't like that. What's this? An envoy is requesting to trade Wode from the province of uh, Tax... of Tax... Um, Salia. Okay. So we'd remove our surplus. Um... And, as we're not currently exporting it, we would gain the following bonus. So we'd lose 5% happiness and gain 0 0.9 money. I'm going to accept. Sure. That seems fine. Right. Head down here. Siege it. Yeah. And I really want to take the capital because, well, I want to get something out of the war. I don't want my allies to get everything, which is the current situation. Okay. Uh, there are a couple battles going on over there. Are they going in our favor? Yeah, they're going in our favor, sort of. We're getting some war score. Uh, I have a son. Okay, cool. It's fine. Uh, I think I said our son's loyalty wasn't full. Uh, wait, why do we have none? Is that because it's fort levels too high? Yes. Yes, it's because it's fort level is too high. Come on, jo just join me over here. We can take this land together. Okay, fine. I'll join you over there. And then we can take the land together. Just in a different spot, okay? Oh, no, now I'm going here. She's not interested. Oh, I see. I see how it is. That's fine. Well, we'll siege this land down. Maybe we can take some revolt land. This might lead to some horrible border gore. Oh, we lo uh, we killed 200 troops who appeared out of nowhere? Okay. This is definitely actually going to lead to some horrible border gore. And I love it. Okay. So, siege is going fine. They have some armies that aren't really doing much anymore. They're being chased down by our allies. That's okay. I'd like it if my, if my allies transferred the control of the provinces over to me. But I guess that's because they want the land. That's why they haven't done that. 
Okay, that's fine. We can siege this down and uh, ignore our allies. Warrior's Honor. The battle-hardened sir uh, soldier serving under this person might have performed acts of valor. Uh, Kuno Lava, in an act of benevolence, has requested permission to, is to institute a particular form of service reward unique to our army. Uh, Kuno Lava would take great offense to being denied this honor, but we might wish to be careful of allowing her too much autonomy. So if we did, did this, our army would her army would become inspired. Okay. Um, but it's a dangerous precedent. Hmm, I don't want to lower her loyalty anymore, so I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, her loyalty cannot get any lower right now. We actually have two disloyal characters. We need to end the war quickly. Alright, so we've won that one. Can I actually take anything from this war now? I could take all of that land. They would not say yes, but I could try it. Okay. Let's head up here and actually send the other army over there. Yeah, see what we can do with that. Yeah. That's fine. We won that one. Two sieges. They should be nice and quick. That will get us 100% against these guys, I think. Yep. Okay, cool. So can I sue for peace and take all of that? I can. Well, I'm going to do that. Definitely. So that land is now mine. Okay. So now I want to head up here. And take this land. Uh, hopefully. Yes. I think that's right. And then that will get us 100% in this war. Except that I can't siege that land yet. Because we don't have enough troops. Oh, I don't control that army anyway. So, that's fine. Sieges are happening. This is a fort. So it's going to take some time. But that's okay. We can, we can take the time to siege it. That's fine. What's this one? Civil War will break out in eight months. Hmm. Not a huge fan of that, if I'm honest. Any of these make people like us? No. Okay. Um. I'm gonna try... Well, can I see? How much does commerce make me? One. I could get 5% more commerce, I suppose. Or military tech could be alright as well. I quite like the idea of being rich. Let's take that one. Right. Uh, so disloyal characters. Is there any way I can get this guy to like me? So this one would lower the other clan chief's opinions of me. But it would increase his loyalty in particular. And he... That, that could work. What about bribe? I'd gain corruption for doing that. But he would gain a lot... Actually, no. He would gain loyal, uh, corruption. No, I'd gain corruption and he would gain corruption. How bad is corruption? Wrong culture group happiness goes down. Aggressive expansion impact goes down with... Cor Wait, that's aggressive expansion. I'm looking, not looking at corruption. I don't know where... Cor oh, corruption's over here. Doesn't tell me what corruption would do as we don't have any. Okay. I could hold a triumph for him. That would increase his popularity and his loyalty. But it would only cost me military and... It would also cost me religious. I'm going to hold a triumph for him. Fantastic. So he's now loyal. For her, there's nothing I can do for her right now. Uh, I could try and seek treatment for her. Mm, wait, is she... She's got an infection which is lowering her health. She might just die. I mean, that, that's kind of my hope here. But I think I avoided civil war, which is good. Lack of a governor for Britannia. Oh, okay, I'll need to... Okay. That's fine. I will think about a governor in a second. We're still sieging this land. That's okay. We still have enough troops to siege it right now. Even though we're taking a little attrition, which is worrying, we should be able to take that province. Yeah. Okay. Seems to be working out okay so far. A little bit more on it. A little bit more on it. Just a little bit more. No, oh, now we've lost the siege. I need someone else to come and sit here. Come on, one of you must realize we need more things there. Anyway, lately some of our leaders start to take advantage of the druids and the role in society, even going so far to expect them to contribute monetarily to the nation. They are a pride and center of our faith. Uh, it is clear that it's a taxing situation for them. Urka 
Korea is speaking for the druids and demands an end to this abuse of power, otherwise how will our relations with the gods pay off? So I can say the exploit exploitation will uh, go on no more, or I can continue to exploit them and get 10% uh, national tax. Uh, I'll get the religious power, that's okay. So this one call for peace, so we get monthly uh, exhaustion. Uh, okay, that's fine. I just need this siege. If somebody would just come and sit on the province with me, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, wait, we have a 100% war score. What can I do with 100%? Oh, I, I actually, I can take that land. I can take all of that land. Oh, that's fine. That's all I wanted, wasn't it? Wait, yeah. I want that land. Can I take individual cities as well? I could take something down there as well, if I wanted to. I really want the coast, though. Hmm. I'll see if anybody joins us, and if nobody joins us, I'll just end the war. I don't think anyone's going to join us. I think they're... Wait, is that 2.5 coming down to us? Uh, is there a way of saying, like, allies, please join me? Uh, no. Okay. Well, because there's no way of controlling our other army, I think we just have to peace out. Yep. Two for peace. Uh, I just want to take that land. Uh, I'm not really worried about taking that one as well. I'm not sure four aggressive expansion is that bad. It's as if it goes above 50, the more severe penalties will kick in. So, I'm not overly worried about it. Um, I might as well take this one as well. Yeah, it kind of makes it bad for taking those two. But if we could have taken that one as well, that would have been good. I think we just have to cope with it. Uh, I also want money. Yeah. That's fine. We'll take that. In peace. That seems fine. Uh, although I could peace out individually with each one. I'm not that worried. Let's just go with this. That's fine. So. We have an exiled army, which I'm going to send over there. We also have another army I still need to get, you know, power back into, but that's fine. And I need to set a governor over here, I think. How do I set a governor? So, uh, no, I need to have a governor assigned. So how do I assign a governor? Oh, there we go. Change governor. So, fi uh, so finesse is their ability to govern. That's fine. So I guess this guy seems like the best option we have available. He's 100% loyal. He has quite a lot of corruption due to crafty, but that's okay. His popularity isn't very high, but no, n neither is anyone else's. He seems fine. I'm not really sure what we need in the governor, but he is now the governor. Okay, and then it costs... Okay, it costs points to change the policy. Does it cost points to change the policy up here? Yes. Okay. Well, that's fine. So he's chosen... Um, and I'd get tyranny if I changed it. And do I get tyranny up here if I change it? No. Okay, that's fine. So he's trying to gay he's trying to get growth over there. Fine. Oh, there are horses down here. Oh, that's very nice actually. And then we have a surplus of wood. Okay, cool for local taxes. We'll send one army. Actually, I might send an army back up north, maybe up to there. I'm assuming they're going to go to the nearest place. Do I need a I don't need a governor over here apparently. Okay, cuz we're the governor over here. This is my capital province? Is it? Cannot change the governor of your capital province. Okay, so if we go to provinces... Doesn't seem like my capital province. But I guess it counts as it, maybe? Because it's close enough? Maybe you only need a governor if it's not connected, and this one's connected by two sea tiles. Potentially that's it. Maybe that's it, and by a border there. Okay, well that's cool. Anyway... I am going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.